In this example, we're going to go ahead and solve this polynomial equation. So right off the bat, I notice I'm not able to factor this uh, using grouping or any other straightforward method. So the next approach then is to check out the rational root theorem. And remember the rational root theorem has to do with that P over Q business, right? So P is going to be our constant and Q is going to be our leading coefficient. Well, it's nice because our leading coefficient is one and P is uh, 54. So I'm going to consider all the factors, positive and negative, of 54 and all the factors, positive and negative, of 1. Well, of course, uh, 1 is just 1 and negative 1. So I don't even care about that because uh, these p factors will cover all the possibilities. So we have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, uh, 4 or 5 will not, plus or minus 6, let's see, 7, 8 will not, plus or minus 9, Let's see, plus or minus, what's that going to be? 18 and plus or minus 27 and plus or minus 54. Well, we've got uh, a lot of values to choose from. I would say positive and negative 1 are the best place to start. So I know if this is a polynomial, so if we have p of x equals this x to the 6th, plus 2x to the 4th, minus 57x squared, plus 54, if p of 1 equals 0, then x minus 1 is a factor. If p of negative 1 is 0, then x plus 1 is a factor. So I'm just going to go ahead and check these two first to get going. Because if we find one that works, we can go ahead and use synthetic division immediately. And then hopefully we'll see something nice. So let's see what happens. Let's plug 1 in first. So 1 to the 6th is 1 plus 2 times 1, minus 57 times 1, plus 54. Ah, that does make 0. This one actually works. So since I have one that works immediately, let's go ahead and use synthetic division. So x to the 6th, I have no x to the 5th terms. I have a 2 for my x to the 4th, no x cubed terms, a negative 57 for my x squared, no x's, and 54. And I know it works, so my remainder here should be 0. So let's bring this 1 down. 1 times 1 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. 1 times 3 is 3. 0 plus 3 is 3. I want to roll here. 1 times 3 is 3. And then we have negative 54, negative 54, negative 54, negative 54 with our zero right here. So this works. And actually this looks pretty good because it looks like now I'll be able to use factor by grouping. So let's go ahead and build this back up. We have x to the fifth plus x to the fourth plus 3x cubed plus 3x squared minus 54x minus 54. And that right there is being multiplied by x minus 1 to give us our zero. So we factored out the x minus 1 factor, and this is what we have left, which now let's go ahead and use factor by grouping on, because this is going to actually work out quite nicely. Okay, so the greatest common factor here looks like x to the fourth, and when I pull that out I'm left with x plus 1. Greatest common factor here looks like plus 3x squared. When I pull that out, looks like I have x plus 1. And finally, if I pull out a negative 54, it looks like I have x plus 1 left over. Okay, so my x plus 1s can uh, be factored out of that set. And I'm left with, then, those greatest common factors. Okay, so this is coming right along. Not bad at all. This right here looks like it'll factor nicely. It'll have a quadratic kind of nature to it. And so uh, if you want to see that, I'll, I'll show you this way. So u equals x squared. We can do a little u substitution. So this becomes u squared plus 3u minus 54, which this will actually factor nicely. The leading coefficient is 1. So I need two factors uh, that multiply to negative 54 that add to positive 3. So positive 9, negative 6. So replacing the u with x squared again looks like this. So just a quick little sidestep there with a the u substitution to factor that nicely if you were unsure what that looks like. Okay, so now we're down to 1, 2, 3, 4 factors here. But I notice this is a squared and this is a squared. 
Let's see, this looks like the sum of two perfect squares, so that will factor over complex numbers. So x minus 3i, x plus 3i. And this difference of squares, well, 6 isn't a perfect square, but I can say x minus the square root of 6 times x plus the square root of 6. And now I have this polynomial in fully factored form. I have, uh, let's see, integer solutions, irrational solutions, and complex solutions as well. So each of these factors needs to be set equal to zero using our zero property of multiplication. And ultimately I'll have x equals positive one, x equals negative one, x equals positive three i, x equals negative three i, x equals positive square root of six, and x equals negative square root of six. So when I put this all together, plus or minus one, plus or minus three i, plus or minus the square root of six, and these will be the six solutions or six roots for our original polynomial equation. It was in degree six, so we knew there were going to be six roots. Some of them could have been duplicates. In this case, there were not. So how did we do that? Well, we weren't able to factor it immediately, so we had to use our rational root theorem. So we tried p of one and p of negative one, but actually we stopped after p of one because it worked. So I knew that x minus one was a factor. So I went ahead and used synthetic division to divide that one out. I was left with an expression that I could factor by grouping. And then once I did that, it was a matter of factoring, 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 factoring until the whole thing was factored. And then I got my six roots right there. So that's that example of solving a polynomial equation.